This is episode 78 of Let's Talk Geek, recorded payday, Wednesday, January 25, 2012. In the show, Nokia Lumia was announced in South Africa, it sort of kind of launched as well. Listen on for more information, uh, the truth about ADSL costs, and how to get your very own satellite. Thanks for watching and listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek 78. Uh, I'm Tim Hogg. I'm Johan Els. I'm Jan from Yellen. And of course, we have the mixer. Um, getting into events uh, quite quickly, 25th of January, uh, there is, okay, well, let's start, 28th and 29th of January is the Open uh, Science Hack Day. And basically, what when they're talking about hacking, they're not talking about the more modern IT equivalent of hacking, which you, you, it is the negative one. They're talking about more the original word of hacking, which is where you. Tinkering. Tinkering, yes. But in a technological sense. Common objects and using them in novel ways to do something great. Um, As in where life hack gets its name from. Yes. Mm. Where is this event? Okay, the event for today is 25th of January. It is in Cape Town uh, at the Open Knowledge Meetup. If you're not, if you're hearing about it now, it's going to be too late. late. But rather stay and watch the show. Far better. Um, But there is an event on the 28th and 29th. Um, I, we will release notes and links on the calendar. So stardates.co.za um, and we'll put that up a bit later. Um, into a bit more. 27 dinner I uh, eventually decided is on Friday, which is the 27th. Uh, I know one of the speakers is going to be Simon Dingle. Uh, Jerry's quite fun to go to. Uh, I know I've missed the boss couple, just life is too busy. Yes, indeed. Moment. I've also missed the last couple. But um, one of our journalists went to an event hosted by NetBank for training up technology journalists, mm-hmm. cool. spe- specific on the financial side of things. And Simon Dingle apparently spoke there, and he was quite entertaining. Mm. So I can imagine it would be quite good. Yeah, yeah. Well worth it. Um, uh, another thing happening up is alt uh, music. We're starting a music podcast video thing. L- Let's talk music. Yes, right. on Friday first. First show should be interesting. Okay. Uh, also yes, on the same night as Twenty Seven Dinner. I started to remember. I was doing something on Friday. <laughs> uh, music <laughs> ones to be way better. <laughs> so who, have you got it lined up to do host this for us? Yes, we've got Dylan John Stewart and Rob. I can't remember his surname. Rob. And Rob. Will be. Uh, both of them are part of a band. Uh, I actually don't know the name of the band. I need to do more research. But they both seem very keen. They were going over all the ideas they want to do. And uh, we're going to see what they get up to. It should be very cool. They're going to make sure we get other band music members in from different bands to come chat. Um, talking about music, also how to make music. And th- they were going spewing off all the things they were wanting to do. So let's actually see what, what Friday turns out to be. Friday will be the first one. And they tend to evolve rapidly for the first three or four shows. Well, let's see what happens. Um, so obviously, all these things, star dates, let's see today. Go check it out. Uh, I think we haven't been giving it much love recently, but we're going to start giving it love again. Yeah, as well. the, uh, there's one haven't. that we mentioned, the, the gaming event. No. Okay, cool. So there's also a gaming event happening in Pretoria, of all places. If you want to have a laugh about uh, about Pretoria, if you live in if you live in Pretoria, Taryn van der Beil on my gaming takes the piss out of us. So uh, <laughs> okay. go, go have a laugh. Um, and uh, anyway, but it's in Facebook. The event's in Facebook. Cool. And it's going to be held at Tings and Times in Waterglen, 7 p.m. tomorrow, Thursday. Waterkloof. Okay. What, what, what are they doing? That Not place. Waterglen. <laughs> Waterkloof. Waterkloof Glen. Glen. All right. And by the time the show is up, unless the show is up tomorrow, which it might be, mm-hmm. uh, it might be too late. So for those of you catching the live stream, you can still make it. Go. go. Click. I, I'll what, go. What, what are they doing at this gaming event? Uh, talking gaming, drinking booze. Eating oh, so food. not playing games. No. They say the monthly okay. Pretoria Gamers meet up, hook up, talk games, eat and drink stuff, have fun. Really? It's just... No, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. It's to get together. Yes, exactly. Yeah, all right. Okay. Which is always cool. If you're into games, meet other like-minded people, then go away and play separately in different rooms. <laughs> Sorry, no, I look, That's I how I, I do enjoy this. my gaming. Right, just, I just <laughs> remember the, old, the good old days we used to actually have to take your PC to somebody else's house and oh, we, network them. And I was going to say we still do that, but we don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it doesn't really help because... Starcraft, for example, which was always a, like a LAN party favorite, doesn't have LAN mode. Yeah. So you have to connect over the internet anyway. Uh, look, the routers are normally smart enough to just route the traffic locally uh, once you've registered the game and stuff. Cool. So that can still happen. But yeah, um, the internet killed the LAN. 
Oh, well. Um, but also there was some gaming event recently as well where they were playing uh, Do- Dota, so Dota 2. Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of comps and stuff happening as well. So it's uh, actually quite interesting. T- Do Broadband's got a local Dota competition yeah. coming up. Yeah. Also on my game, go check it out. Uh, <coughs> all right. Uh, into the topics. Do you want your own satellite? Yes. Cool. I, I didn't even have to think about that. I want well, one. You can get one now. Uh, $300. So what's it about? That's okay. cheaper than a cell phone. 2100 what, what, what satellite? Uh, look, it's what frequency browser broadcast on? I is it, is it a communication fre- satellite? Is it observation satellite? Is it a satellite? Yeah, okay, look, satellite? It's a, a pseudo satellite. It's basically guys are getting together with Kickstarter and they're trying to start a project. Mm. Um, and basically, they're creating what they call little micro satellites. And basically, it's micro or nano. Nano, small satellite. Very very small. Very small okay. postage stamp size. Uh, it's going to have a transmitter and it's basically going to be just transmitting one message out. And you by, by buying this get to pick the message. Okay, so, so they're going to build thousands of these little things, go put them in a box and basically launch them. And, and basically they're wanting to go towards having basically swarm satellites. And this is the funding to start the progress and the development and design and testing of this. So Skynet, they're building Skynet. Yes, except <laughs> step one won't do very much. <laughs> yeah, okay, but I mean, that's how Skynet works. It's, it's all insidious. But like the guy does it's say, like, ultimate Greek kid, you had your own satellite. One thing to be aware, this, the, these satellites, which is both a good thing and they will burn, they're not going to last long, so at most about three months. So then they'll fall back to the atmosphere, burn up, but this is also actually a good thing because it doesn't put a lot of more junk into space. Okay. So, it's like a disposable satellite. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's just while it's they're testing burn, it. Like to, burn satellite, like a burn phone. Mm-hmm. Just a burn satellite. Send up, send a message and come down again. I, if if, uh, if How do I anybody wants to I build it? the dark net, I think this is the place to do it. Like totally independent satellite network. The yes. Latency is the only problem. It's not that bad for, for communication. If you're wanting dark net, you know, you're not wanting to do it for voice. Um, one thing, um, basically what they do is, is these the transmission will be picked up by amateur hams. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have your own personalized message. So you get to pick what messages get sent. Okay. So if your message will get picked up and they're basically going to be tracking this as they're flying around the world. Um, and, you know, there's different, depending on how much you pay, you also get different things. Okay, you said postage stamp. That thing is a little bit bigger, but it's actually... Uh, they, they said postage stamp. American postage words. stamp. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not that I can remember what size a postage stamp is, now that I think about it. It's about half a credit card if I look at that photo. You actually look at the size of the fingers, so it's, it's that big. Like that yeah. chip is as big as your nail. That's about half a credit card. Oh, yeah, we're pointing at the screen big. for anybody watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you watching, hearing the audio, look, we're pointing at the and screen. This, try and follow the video next week. <laughs> um, but with those cool things, depending on how much you donate, yeah. you actually get different things. So there's one where, you know, you get credits and the rest of it. And then the ultimate donation, I can't remember exactly where it is, you get to push the button that launches the satellite. Okay. That's ultimate geek cred. L- l- or something, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but basically, it's... It's, it's, it's a good start. I'm just yeah. more worried about uh, being a frequent flyer, um, how this is going to actually influence the windscreen on the airplane. I mean, not very much. It will, so. burn, it will burn up before it gets anywhere. Low no, I'm worried about on the way up. Are they going to fly all of these into one satellite and then deploy them? Is that what yes. they say? So no, no, this oh. is getting launched off, off like the way normal satellites get launched. Okay. It's all in a big box, and once it reaches space, the box will unfold and, and everybody get to a little easy. place. Yes. Okay. Um, so little no, place. It's, all, it's done properly. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking, just checking. Okay. Otherwise, I'll launch your own nano satellite. Because at the top, the, the heading is wrong. It's a nano satellite. It's going to be in geosync. Well, not geo. It's going to be in orbit. one of the orbits. Yeah. Not geosynchronous because he's going to burn up and die. Okay, now the next one. <laughs> yes. How are you going to aim at it if it's moving? It has to be stationary. Why? Geostationary, no? Why? Why? It won't be geo. Can't be in geo. I'm sorry. That no, it's, can't okay, be. Okay, so it's going to have to be in one of the other orbits. Okay, but then how do you aim at it? Why would you aim at it? Okay. Signals coming. Signals being So what they're doing okay. is as these things rotate around the Earth, they're going to have guys listening for it and picking up the messages. Uh, okay. Now, the other way, the, the, in actual fact, you don't need it to be as long. So it's not your satellite. Necessarily. I mean, it's yours, but I mean, you won't be able to access it all the time. Or you will for a short while. <laughs> Look, if you think of some of the big satellites, what they do is actually have three or four of them um, so that there's always one over you and then they communicate backwards and forwards. Yes, yes. Um, and that's how they do it. Which is not why, as, as we're getting more and those talking about all the junk in space, it's, it's what's going to happen. Yeah, there's, yeah. A grave, there's a graveyard orbit in yes. space. I mean, like, let's, we, we can talk about that in right. the next episode. Um, this is just, are you bored of coding? Do you want more motivation? No. 
Okay, well then, <laughs> don't go in Visual C because you now have achievements <laughs> and badges. What's I achievement mean, badges? I mean, badges and leaderboards. I mean, like, no. Well, look, actually, it's actually quite clever. Leaderboards. Be- because as part of this, <laughs> I would say, is guys, they're wanting to teach people about some of the lesser known. Um, you did You did realize this is Visual Studio. Yes, you did, you did, you did read that. Do Visual you know, Studio is fantastic. Do you know how many people code in Visual Studio? No, Visual Studio is great. Yeah. I've, you didn't read the part of Visual I'm Studio. I'm not going to be using it, <laughs> but a lot of people do use Visual Studio. Oh, it's, so, let, let me, it's not built into the core. Let me, let me just correct this heading. Let's make it Microsoft Soft. Visual Studio. Studio. There we go. Um, and on the, look, on their <laughs> part, it's quite, quite clever because basically some yeah, of the badges, okay. you, you need to go into some of the features that are not commonly used but are quite powerful. Let me just ask this. Okay, the Visual Studio suite of software. I mean, I was going through our assets register. We actually bought a suite for development, I think, three years ago, and it was okay. six and a half thousand rand. Yeah, is that still the going rate for Visual Studio? No idea. I mean, that's a th- th- that was the biggest setback for actually starting to develop in the Microsoft or the Apple worlds is your capital layout just to get the development environment. So. I get that, but I have heard from the guys who developed this. If you develop in for Microsoft, it really does accelerate your development quite a bit. It it does a lot of it does a lot of the things that you have to manually do in most other editors. Uh, a lot of libraries, yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's just it's just a if the studio is like six and a half thousand rand, that should already get me like uh, three badges. Thank you. Okay, look, <laughs> some of these achievements, by the way, just open up the page. Yeah. Some of them are not that good. For example, there, 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 is, in line. there is a whole don't try this at home section yes. of achievements. One saying have 100 fields in a single class. The next one, <laughs> the next one is entitled go to hell. Anybody take, take a wild guess what that entails? It's use the go to keyword. Okay. <laughs> There's also one that's something like no life or something like that. If you caught coding at 11 o'clock at night on a Friday or a Saturday. You so know, they're, they're lonely. Negative, oh, it's called okay, lonely. Okay. Uh, lonely. <laughs> Forever alone. Oh, no, I think it's, it's, it's quite a clever. It is, okay, is let, me, it. let me rephrase it. It would be nice if this could come out of a more, what about, uh, not slash dot. Um, Clips. Who is that? NetBeans. <laughs> yeah, but one of those, those platforms of, of open source. No, man. Uh, force. No, man, the site that does open source. Oh, uh, SourceForge. SourceForge. If they start doing that sort of achievements, if your program is doing well, a lot of good comments, that would be yeah, more that, that, because they that, don't care what platform you develop. That would be in. achievements on how your program is doing as opposed to plus that can coding be, style. You can game the gamification there. Yeah. It, yeah. Anyway, but anyway, look, it's interesting. It's <laughs> it's sorry, Visual Studio Professional 2010, 8,500 rand. Yes. Here we go. And that, by the way, uh, I heard something very interesting about Microsoft's licensing terms uh, when it comes to this kind of thing because. Um, apparently, this does not cover, like, what, what was the problem now? Um, I th- it's like it doesn't cover deployment or, or something like that. Oh, your, your, your user license. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yes, is it, there's a different library you need to buy to, buy, to build it. It does build a basic installer, but to actually, was, we had some guy developing for us, and the, the installer where you can update your program. So basically, it will uninstall it and replace it. It doesn't do that. Mm. Uh, I'm not really sure. We had to basically reboot the PC every time we, we did an update to the program. Yes, yes. Um, with the, that installer. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just double check my facts, but there's something very fishy about um, the, the, the way they do licensing. If you think you have, your, you've got MSDN and, uh, and you're good to go, and you've got your per seat licenses, you're actually not. Um, oh, no, once no, no, you start no. becoming I'm successful, Microsoft will come knocking and they'll ask for more money. On price check, uh, the price I gave in your know, i was just the development suite. If you want the MSD libraries on top of that, you're looking at 34,000 Rand. Yes, yes. And even then, that's not good enough. So I'll just check my facts. I'll oh, come no, back I must say, I, I, I don't know. Well I don't done, Microsoft. Code for Microsoft. <laughs> they, they, they let you in. The thing is, they leave I code you. for Microsoft via the web browser. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, turn off Town turns oh, off Lies to see the stars <laughs> I read that all wrong I thought it was Turn, turn off my no. Okay yes uh, um, Look This is very close To a Astronomy uh, Basically I think uh, I've got uh, I think this is in England But they put off An area As an astronomy reserve Okay um, But not like Our astronomy reserve Which is radio silence This is light silent And one of the towns Nearby they put a thing to also motivate and help increase tourism to the area. They've got everybody in the town to turn their lights off to show how well you can actually do stargazing with just 
um, binoculars. And half of the problem why we can't do it and why we aren't as interested in seeing the stars so well nowadays is all the light pollution we're creating. Fair, and that was one of the nice things being in, um, on the coast over the holidays is that's one thing. You, know, yeah. you, you can actually see the stars. It's, mm. it's quite amazing and that you can't see in town. But um, – I just see so much. You, yeah, this has got to be a very small town. I mean, I can no, I must say, look. Uh, but, it, but but then again, ESCOM is doing it for us. <laughs> Th- this is people sacrificing and choosing <laughs> to do it themselves. Uh, ESCOM which is doing I it for find us. quite quite a good thing and falls in quite nicely with what on we're trying subject, to do with ESCA and all the rest of it, which they doing their pick soon. Uh, on this on this subject, quickly, sorry, off off topic. Didn't uh, Google decide to, to stop development on the Sky Map? Yes. Open source it. Oh, they're going to open source it? Yes. Oh, brilliant. Okay. so they're um, More so they're going to stop funding it and doing it, but they are open sourcing all the stuff that they've done. But I mean, I was thinking about uh, what development is left. I mean, is it just adding the odd planet that gets added? But I mean, because the, the software on its own is working. I mean, you use it to find the stars in the star. And then, and then. So I was like, it's was, it was quite amazing they're dropping the project, but we all understand they do that yeah, on yeah. things that don't go anywhere. For, for those who don't, who, who might have missed it, I mean, for example, the Google desktop, the Google Talk desktop client, yeah. development has been seized on that, but people still use it. It's still quite functional. Google Talk or Google Desktop? Google Talk desktop client. So oh. the, the app that you download for Windows... So that you can transfer files. No, so that you, you can, well, can, so you can use, the only way you can transfer yes. files yes, in yes. Talk is to And use I think it, it also it also has like one or two other features. Um, you can do voice with it. Yes, yeah. I think. Oh, we can do the voice in the browser. Yes, in, in fact, the browser is the only one of the Google Talk clients with all the features. That's no, you only can't do files in the browser. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. But, but you can, can do, do video. video. So it's Jinx. a <laughs> Go <your> snap. <laughs> okay, but in any case, all right. So there's quite a couple of things that they've stopped development on. Um, thanks to Rudolf basically putting this stuff together but I'm sure you got given a lot of the stats um, so thank you for whoever gave him the stats uh, there was somebody yeah, yeah, he, who was he, Web Africa he queried Web just Africa. give us a subject what are we talking about truth about ADSL costs it, basically he's gone and given a, a breakdown you of remember what those, it costs. those awesome breakdowns of like where the money for CDs go mm-hmm. and, it, and it broke it down and it showed that the vast majority of the dosh goes to record labels yes this is like this but for ADSL and it shows you and if you just look at this uh, what's it 89% of all money for ADSL goes to Telcom. Now, let's go back to the ground level. Yes. Quickly, what is a Telcom IPC? IP Connect. So what, is what, it, what does for? it mean for the ISP? Okay, let me explain how ADSL works. Just let's go there. that. Yes. When you dial in, so when you dial in a PPOE connection or the connection that you put in your ADSL modem, yes. what you're actually doing is you're doing via Telcom, via your ADSL modem, a IPC Connect through to the service provider. Okay. Right. So it's a tunnel. It's a tunnel. From your modem into your ISP. Yeah. Point to point over Ethernet. Yeah. Just think of it as a VPN ah, to your okay. ISP. At that point, you then break go via their network through to the internet. So you pay the, the ISP pays Telcom for that VPN. Yes. And it's billed on a per meg basis. Mm-hmm. And you've got to pay, I can't remember if it's monthly, but I, uh, I think it's some, I can't remember. I'm not going to give exact amounts of what it costs for that. Okay. Uh, but here they've gone and done a breakdown. Um, now, this the breakdown that he gave us on my broadband. Uh, I don't, uh, you said it was for the one meg line. Okay, so the one meg okay. ADSL with a 10 gig ISP account. All right. Um, the phone rental part, the 140 Rand, yes. We all know that's a big fight and that's going to yes. hopefully get sorted out soon. I want that to be part of my, I don't mind if you charge me that, but make it part of my ADSL and separate it from, from the cost. Okay, but has anybody actually decided what's a fair charge? Because that phone rental line is the copper line. Has anybody actually decided what's a fair rate for that 140? Um, what do you mean? Because everybody says that I want to pay for voice, but what is a fair rate for then for the copper between the house and the Okay, state? but my argument is I'm also paying for my uh, ADSL line. Mm-hmm. But we all know that technology-wise, the ADSL line part is the modem sitting in the exchange. Which we basically pay off in like two, three months. Are you okay. referring to the DSLAM? The yes. DSLAM, yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's, the, that's the ADSL part of it. I mean, but, and, and what makes up the phone rental side is the copper. So, yes, the strongest argument uh, 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 during the local loop unbundling hearings that uh, we did stream live, and you can find it on our channels, um, th- that's why we brought it in they saw it in the stream. <laughs> so... Part of, yes. <laughs> Part of the discussion there was, yes, um, but then why can you have prepaid telecom services where you're not paying monthly for the copper? 
because okay. they, they build it into the cost. So that's normally how so it works. So then it works on the core cost. Yes. So if I get a if I get a prepaid telecom line at home, you will, pay it, will it expire in three months? Will it like like a prepaid cell phone account? Will it actually expire? If if so you I can, haven't used it in three months, uh, with you were for me on my question. Yeah, that's where I'm coming from. I think with prepaid there is a upfront cost or something like that. I need to look into this. Uh, just so that we've got comments from the IRC. Please um, bring them th- in. Th- that um, the, the the telecom cost, the line rental cost, is regulated by ECASA. Yeah. Um, okay, so but the ADSL okay. portion isn't. Yes, the the, the ADSL. Uh, you're talking about the 413 yes. or the 289. Yeah. Okay. No, but that's my argument: is, is build the two together. So don't give me as a separate one. So if somebody wants a telephone line, charge them whatever, and then I do not want to pay. I don't want a telephone line from Telcom because people getting phoned on it for people who aren't me. Because I actually the only reason I have a line is to have an ADSL modem. I do not want the line. Yes, yes. So what you're talking about is naked ADSL. Yes. Um, so when you're talking about, so basically you want to you want to say that you want to be billed for the copper portion and the logical and ADSL the portion. The, yeah. The, the, so you, the dial tone should be a separate. Tone. I don't want to be statistic saying I'm one of Telcom's voice subscribers when I actually don't use it for voice. That's yeah, a good, that's a good statement. Yeah, because there's how many people that are being char- uh, being added to the statistics and all they're actually using the line force for ADSL. Yes, good argument. Good argument. Um, but yes, to come back to Rudolf's effort, yeah, this is brilliant. Um, thank you, Rudolf. I don't know if we're actually going to get anything. Anything else? Is, 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 I hope this. I don't know. How do we change it? Um, well, there's nothing really to change because the, the fact is, is that, I mean, P- telecom gets a bad rap, and, and I understand why. Is because I mean, people feel that we should be at a point where we're paying less for the service, um, and that there are many factors influencing it. And I don't really want to delve into it now. We've done it in many different shows, but the bottom line is um, that uh, telecom. Uh, the, they're the only company who is willing to operate a copper network. Nothing is stopping anybody else from rolling out a copper network, uh, uh, like physically speaking. What's stopping them is money. Um, so, so now they're fighting to get access to Telcom's copper. To Telcom's copper, yeah. because it, it's just not feasible to roll out your own copper network nowadays. Yeah. Um, so th- that's the only way to really, I want to say, fix this problem. Unbundle the local loop in whatever, you know, like it can be phased, it, just as long as it gets done. Um, so uh, right now they're talking about bitstream access. That's a fantastic first step. Yes. They're talking about naked ADSL, even if it drives out pricing and increases competition, it drives out pricing in the short term. If it drives out competition, that's fantastic, you know, in the long term. Um, so the, the fact is, Telcom operates the cable. They take, they take all the risk. So the money does need to, there has, the money I, has I, to I, go I, to them. Don't mind paying them. Um, it's just if you look at, they basically are squeezing people out of it. They take such a large portion of it that the ISPs pretty much are just breaking even, and which reduces, you know. Rod, Rudolph cracked the joke um, at, at an ISPA conference once, and it's actually completely spot on. He says, only, only in South Africa will you find an ISP market so vibrant <laughs> that they've been able, paraphrase, sorry, I'm adding words to Rudolph's, but I'm getting the gist yep, of it, yep. um, that ISPs are able to, to turn a profit on selling products below cost. Um, so, I mean, it, that's almost what's, what's happening in South Africa. Which it shows you in the bit where, where they are allowed to compete in the price and in the same, it's brought cost down. Now, there is no competition for telecom, and that's maybe it's more. I yeah, just yeah. want. And, and to talk about the challenges, something that's come up, um, I, I had the opportunity, and it, w- and it was great. And, um, you know, I'm actually quite thankful to the people who helped set it up. I got to interview a man called Theo Hess at Telcom. Mm-hmm. He is a chief in charge of network field operations there. Um, great guy to talk to and he just we didn't have a lot of time so what he took me through was just what they're facing in terms of cable theft um and like if you just look at the graph the the, the article the, the the first article on this is is up on the site half almost half of their line faults is because of uh, theft yeah, and sabotage yeah, yeah. and look, that same statistic goes to fiber because people they aren't after the fiber but they they kill the fiber in the same process um so for whatever reason so um, there, there are challenges to operating a, a network like this in South okay. Africa. Two comments, two comments from the IRC quickly. First one is from CZC. Wouldn't it be best just to go skip copper and go straight to fiber? And that's exactly what's happening in South Africa. Yeah. Um, the problem is, is that's exa- and, and, the, and that's part of the problem because that's exactly what we did. We don't have cable networks in this country. Um, you know, elsewhere in the world, you've got cable TV, yes, right? Yes. Do you remember that? Yeah. Um, and, and we skipped that step completely. We only had um, 
uh, the right. wireless broadcast TV, uh, never cable broadcast TV. Those cable broadcast uh, things were it then turned into n internet, internet delivering services, services yeah. right? We never got that. So we are skipping straight to fiber, but uh, the startup costs for fiber, and that's another comment in the thread, it's actually absolutely correct. Um, they are incredibly high, and people in industry are pegging, for example, in a residential area, to trench just from the curb to your house is 20,000 bucks to put in fiber into yeah. your house. So uh, what we're looking at, and Jan okay. von Sale um, put this, laid this out beautifully. He's like, follow the money for how this development will work. What's going to happen is from a wireless operator side, is they're going to roll out fiber to their base stations and yeah. to their towers. Then they're going to put up LTE to do the last mile. Um, and so, and then, you know, once that starts making money, the, 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 that local loop will get shorter and shorter until everybody's like within one kilometer of a distribution LTE. point. Yeah. And then taking fi putting fiber from there to your premises, you know, will become more and more feasible as time okay. goes on. Okay. Oh, wait, before we go in, one thing, just bring us back into the ADSL thing, right? So I'm paying for the copper. So it cost me about 400 and something around for the copper to, to the exchange, which you just said is actually the expensive bit. It then costs about, in the range of, I think, about 4,000 Rand for one meg to the service provider. Yeah, that is something. And the IPC and costs also so are too So basically, high. in a way, they're charging me and they're charging the... Uh, I've, I've got the same beef. Sorry, Jan, we're interrupting you. You're trying to get in the I'm word just trying edgeways. To get, I, I, I go. <laughs> um, but I, I've got the same beef uh, to, to draw parallels to the hosting market. I, as a consumer, pay my service provider, my, my ISP, for data. Yes. Um, and as somebody who buys hosting, I, buy, I, I pay my hosting provider for, for, data. for data transfer. Yeah. So that, that data transfer is being paid for twice, in my yeah, opinion. But that's where MWEP is now shaking the tree because yeah. they've given you uncapped hosting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've sorted out the, the, the link between the ISPs because you're absolutely right. If you're not with MWeb, you have another ISP. There was a lot of fees involved to get your data from that network yeah. to MWeb. And so, and so that's so, another place to, to get you know, costs down, uh, by the way, is never mind you know, all the money flowing to telecom. People are complaining about IPC cost. That does need to come down. Costs does need to look at it. Um, but there's all kinds of impact assessments okay. and stuff that they want to do. Cool. I know we need to anyway, move along. Gonna, the other yeah. cost that needs to come down but is the cost of, of local, cool. local access, local fiber access okay. from uh, points at the coast, like where Seacom and those cables land, yeah. to Johannesburg, that, that backhaul. Those prices need to come down. It costs more than international backhaul. Mickey D is asking a very good question. Neotel was supposed to help this problem. Um, What's your comment? Yeah, no, my, quick. No, no, quick. What Neotel says is that they were never supposed to compete directly with Telcom. And it's, and it's a very interesting statement. I, I've actually not made too deep a study of it, to be completely honest, because I, for one, you guys remember, I remember the hype. Yes. They yeah. were supposed to be the SNO. I also remember they were going to do and get all these things, and they were going to get uh, the facilities from uh, the government, so they were going to take over the ESCOM network and all the other And networks. they did take over the ESCOM no, network no, for a no, while, no, no, and they then didn't. they got no, split no. off from them. They never got it. Before they got exclusivity on that network with no cost. Before they got to it, uh, government rolled it off into Infraco. Infraco. Yeah, but in Utah, still had exclusivity on that network until last year. So okay. they did have access to the ESCOM network until last year. I just want to make one comment. I did have Neotel. They screwed it up and I cancelled it. Yes. So yeah. um, moving along. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> talking about five and all the rest of it, let's bring it in. Also, uh, Stephen Song of, uh, what's it, five? Uh, uh, he's from Village Telco. Well, he's from Village yeah, Telco. Yeah, founder of the Village Telco. One of the things that they're doing is, and we had him on here, he spoke about yeah, an awesome the After Fiber Project yes. is what it's called. Yeah. And they're trying to get detailed diagrams of all the fiber that's going through Africa. I know they already have one of the undersea cables. No, no, no. He's personally looking after this map. He's the one that's drawing this map and trying to keep it up to date, and he's doing a hell of a good job. Very good of job, it. yeah. Yes. Um, and one of the places he's, he's got from Kenya, you, you know, you have, when he talks about he went to Kenya, he asked the ministry for it, and they basically went and told everybody they have to give him all the details of how the fiber works. Um, he's gone to Dark Fiber, Africa's helped him, all the rest of it. One of the people he can't get from is Telcom. <laughs> yeah, and, and, it's, and it's unfortunate. Um, Telcom has since uh, responded, um, and, and it was actually quite cute. Old, uh, when I posted the article, Steve Song tweeted, I heart my broadband. Um, cool. So we heart you too, Steve. Um, and uh, Telcom said that in the original PIA request, I don't even remember what PIA stands for, something about access of information. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and... 
the, 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 the way that the act works is you submit one of these requests and then the company who you know, is the custodian of that information is supposed to give it to you uh, based on, on the merits of the, of the request. Oh, and Telcom said, you know, this is amongst other things, competitive information and could put them in a, in a, in a difficult position and blah, blah, blah. But Talcom if you want to hear the standard response, once again, look at the coverage of the local loop unbundling hearings <laughs> that we had on Let's Talk Network. They spent half an hour saying why they would not answer a question. Public Access Information Act. Anyway, um, and um, Telcom responded and said that in the original PIA request, um, it was not mentioned what essentially what the information was going to be used for. And so when Steve Song wrote up his blog post and we contacted Telcom about it, um, they said now that they've got all the information at hand, they are reconsidering, yeah. which is great because it would be really, really cool to be able to show Telcoms. Plus, I mean, I think people need to understand how big Telcom's network is. And if they see the size of Telcom's network on that map, there might be some respect for well, what they do. Also, in a, in a weird way, it might help increase investment in this country. Yes. Showing that we have it, and we do actually have this network, and we are moving forward, which is what we want. Yes. More investment, which also Telcom would score from. Because yeah. Just for I just put it in the IRC as well. Uh, you're looking for most, many possibilities. African undersea cables. That's his undersea cable map. He's actually got a, n a different one for after fiber. After fiber is on a different page. Oh, no, it's on the same website. Many yeah, possibilities. Same, same website. Yeah. Oh, after fiber. Yeah, just a, just a different sub page. Cool. Anyway, uh, thank, thank you, Steve. Wrong? Yeah, thank you, Steve. <laughs> thank great, you, Steve. Great Keep up the good work. Um, I must give congratulations <laughs> to Jan Vermeulen <laughs> for calling it. And literally, the, the night before we did our quick geek last week, and he was saying uh, that Anna Craig has refuted, he's not going to Celsius, it's not happening. And you were going, well, in actual fact, he is. Yeah, and, and the truest comment. On, on my broadband, in the My Broadband forum thread when the news broke that Alan Ott Craig was in fact taking over as Celsius CEO was that something is never true until it's been officially denied. <laughs> um, <laughs> <so> <laughs> um, and it literally the next day, so as we were releasing our, our show going, what well, he's saying is not, he was saying that yeah, he was. And, we, and, and it, it was a bit embarrassing, but, but uh, Rudolph confronted him about it. Um, hopefully that's water under the bridge now. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, there was no wiggle room for him there. Yeah. Um, but the story that they're going with is that when we asked them for comment, the deal was not finalized. And uh, that evening, um, they shook hands and signed agreements. I and still else. think you said it was a legal requirement. Up to this date, he couldn't say it. And beyond this date, he could. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps, perhaps that, that could be the case. I don't know. Yeah. We yeah. won't know. Yeah. Um, but look, kudos. Uh, good luck. I hope so. he actually makes Sal so you do better, which he should. Um, because more competition is always a good thing. Yeah, and hope he continues what uh, laws uh, takes from laws and makes it go further. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a good thing. I think there's a lot of positivity here. I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of speculation. A lot of people know, you know, the real reasons behind the departures of the original executive. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But um, there's been a lot of positive comments. And and even though it might just be a public face, the fact is that that Lars did do you know did put the, the company on the map in terms of the public eye. Yeah. Um, now Celsius needs to make money, and yes. Celsius needs to look after its network. And I really hope that Alan. Not Craig, um, does that? Yeah, no, yeah. Bring brings to Celsius table what he what he brought for Vodacom. I think I think he should. So yeah, uh, yeah. look, I really it's great. And uh, Lars, did, before Lars, was, well, Celsius, you didn't they were there, but you didn't hear about them. And after Lars, now everybody knows about them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about that, we almost probably we just have to work out the exact details, but we must probably going to have a competition at some point. Um, I know definitely there will be some two gig Celsius sims to give away. Uh, that will last two gigs a month till the end of this year. We're just going to work out the details for that, but oh, well that, that's going to be coming. That's very nice. All right, cool. Um, and then tonight, I went to the Nokia Lumia launch. For I have this, the, I must just say. I have the pink bangle to prove it and everything. Where's that camera? There's the camera. And it says, for those who can't read it from there, have an amazing everyday and it says media on the badge. Anyway, um, so they uh, launched, the, uh, kind of launched <laughs> the Lumia 800. They announced the launch. Yeah. Well, they la they're launching it tomorrow, but, so only, but only for one the day, launch. and then it'll come back in February. Um, it's exclusive to Vodacom for now. Yeah. Um, it's 279 a month on a business talk chat call. Business yeah. call. <laughs> there we go. Um, and you get 100 megs of data every month. And if you... And if you go tomorrow, the first 200 people will get Lumias in this country. The first 200. And you get an Xbox Arcade. Are they only going to sell 200 yes. units tomorrow? 
That is, that's all they've got. That's it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is this to generate a bit of an Apple line and have the whole hype about it? That, but the thing is that they said because obviously of the stampede at that university, people aren't allowed to queue until the doors open at six. So I don't so know how they're going to enforce do, that. you like hover. Beats me. And then that's actually going to cause more, more chaos. Just chaos. let people queue. Yeah. Let people queue, put two security guards there with shotguns. <laughs> no, what, 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 what they started doing with because of crowd problems on the Apple products is they let you queue, but they give you a number. So you're the first one at the door, you're number one. There you go. And it's, it was only in one. It was in China where they had the problem. Everywhere else, they've always been quite civil. So, so I always find when people don't queue and then suddenly they open the doors, everybody rushes to get in the front and that's when you have your fight. Anyway. Yeah, but apparently the way they're going to control this is with tags. You arrive, they give you a number. There you go. If you don't get a I number. I am not a number. You anyway, go home. Yes. Nobody anyway, has watched the So pizza. Nokia Lumia, the device, Windows Phone 7, I know this, uh, this geeky podcast eschews all things Microsoft, but. Uh, it's, it's a nice. Look, I still, Microsoft, it, and the, the, the nice Metro phone. UI looks like. I want to care. Feels I slick. want to. I want to. I just. <laughs> and the, the Nokia, the Lumia 800, okay. looks like the Nokia N9. I must ask you, do you care? Uh, yeah, a little. Um, because uh, the, the stats from last year showed that Windows Mobile is, I think, the third most popular smartphone in the country still. Windows Mobile. mobile. Not, not phone, right? So this is people on, on old okay. devices oh, that what, are looking what, to what, what I mean by How much of that's our corporate deployments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that yeah. doesn't matter, so does it? When I say, do you care? Will you go out and buy one? Uh, no. I'll take one for free, though. If yeah, no, no, it's, 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 it's a look, beautiful uh, one. I'll play with it. I still, you know I'm the Windows guy. Yeah. I think there might be a future if this product with something like Windows 8 actually gives you a better... If they keep on pushing it the way they're pushing, this this phone will be a force to be reckoned with. It will be the third one, which I'm very happy about. Yes. They must just keep on doing it. They, they're making all the right sounds, all the right moves. Just keep on doing it. Uh, Microsoft seems to be moving in a very good direction at the moment. Because um, I st- unfortunately... Android doesn't give you the... the, the the flexibility between device and your notebook or your desktop. Android's not there. Explain that statement. <laughs> Where Mac, Apple is, is very yeah, is yeah. There. But my problem with it's, Windows it's Phone... Not, it's not one seamless... Yeah, but you have, to have the, you have to have the whole ecosystem, which irritates me. Winmo, and that's what I love about Android. Winmo is the same. If you're not on Windows, forget about it. You need the Zune software. Uh, well, you can get around it without well, it, but it's still... People are buying Apple because of that. I guess. And they're, they're buying an Apple no, phone, and an Apple tablet, people and Apple... People are still buying sorry. more Androids now. It's about they're, they're, they're Android has way super. No, no, okay. Apple. What I'm saying is, you you tend to find a guy with an Apple uh, uh, notebook has also got an Apple phone because yes, the ecosystem because they, is they, one. They, no, because they they want the brand. There's a lot of that going on there. It's but not about the same ecosystem because they work differently. For so all I, you say, they still work differently. Anyway, what what anyway, really I still counts? Don't want one. Yeah, I just what want to be really counts in <laughs> Nokia's favor. Um, and this is something that uh, this is uh, my personal like I'm going to make a prediction, and this is going to be my personal challenge to all the uh, cell phone manufacturers out there who are trying to get a slice of the the developing world's pie. Right? Mm-hmm. And what what makes Nokia so unique? Right? I I get maps from them with navigation that has now finally come to Android mm-hmm. in South Africa. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Right? Yeah. A recent, yeah, okay. Well, recently yeah. last year, towards yes, the end of last yeah. year, right? Nokia had that for yonks. Yes. All right? Nokia has uh, a music store. It wasn't free. It was. No, navigation on Android is free. No, Nokia. No, it was free for no, a very long no, time. No, no, no. no. Yeah, but it got free Thank very you. quickly. It became free, but it wasn't yeah. free. Yeah. Nokia has a music store. They have taken the time yeah, to ink the is, content agreements. Yeah. Now, now, all the Nokia needs to do to stay on top is they need to give me videos they need to get me series and stuff it's going to be difficult i think working around the the contract Do you still get the free have. maps with the nokia yes. um you get you get free maps for your region but if you no, no 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 hang on i took a um a nokia i took the n9 no no to germany because remember, this is not maps. running sibian i'm talking about with the windows phone yeah yeah they say so you everything get the, is free okay. yeah, yeah, but it's, still it's the same. a window environment so you're going to have access to maps live no but you, this is nokia maps it comes with Nokia's, Nokia maps, not the Microsoft Maps. It might have Microsoft. I, I didn't actually check, but it definitely has Nokia's cool. navigation app on there. Moving on, this yes. <laughs> BB versus Android versus Apple. Yes. Oh, so we're back to the same subject. Yeah. Well, okay, quickly, th- that's what I said. Since we had yeah. it, let's actually quickly yeah. stats from Vodacom. Uh, we'll bomb the link into the IRC. It'll be in the show notes. Um, we got cool stats from Vodacom just about these three platforms. You know, n- we didn't get Winmo, <laughs> sadly, but um, okay, BlackBerry yeah, well, dominates hold on, with hold on. just under three million devices on the Vodacom network. Just sorry, they, you didn't get Windows because they haven't been selling Windows yet? No, no, no. We, I don't think we requested those stats. Okay. And Vodacom okay. was skittish to give us these stats to begin yeah. with. Right. Um, it, it's always tricky 
because releasing stats like these can be can it, change your market. I mean, yeah, and you can yeah, make yeah. them buy more of and something. Also, now your competitors know how many devices you got in your network. Yeah. So um, nobody else has given us stats. Um, anyway, so um, Android and Apple are neck and neck. Uh, just under 300,000 devices each on the Vodacom network. That, that means that BlackBerry is literally an order of magnitude. <laughs> well, not almost an order of magnitude if you just multiply by 10 directly more uh, you know, on the Vodacom network. So yeah. um, that just shows you how huge BlackBerry still is. But the is biggest reason for that is the, the, the free VAIs, bandwidth. Obviously. It's free bandwidth. Yeah, it's a value for money issue. Yeah, people don't understand. Plus, they no, have no. a not very, very it's cheap entry-level uh, device. For, for that 8520. I think that thing is ridiculously well, it's, popular. It's for people who, who don't have a lot of money. It, it you you cannot pick it. You would take if I you know I would take the BlackBerry because I get the, the free bandwidth, so I can still get all my emails, all the rest of it. It's single payment a month. It is just such a good value proposition. True. True. <laughs> is there any information out how that outage of the BlackBerry's network has affected these figures? Was it actually not that much? I, I think people whinge, but they would. They, they, they see, think the jokes this is churning went on. Yeah, this is the thing, though, and this is this is the argument I always make: is like I prefer a top-notch, high-quality network that never goes down. Mm. I've made peace with the fact I'll never have that again. The ADSL network is ruined thanks to Uncapped, and the same is going to happen to our mobile broadband networks because people are willing to trade off reliability for cost. Um, and I think the same was true for BIS. Even though BIS has been reliable until now, I think BIS can be off for, for like a couple of days a month and people wouldn't care. Because okay. there is no, for the same price, there's nothing to compete. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, moving into we'll something. Still get me to buy a Blackberry, but yeah. Not true. <laughs> moving to something less contentious. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing. Uh, Ubuntu Ready is the new Unity. Yeah. To go out in their long term release, <laughs> yes, Tavo uh, 4. As a default? Yes. No. Perfect sense, hey. Okay, so what we're talking about <laughs> is they are replacing the menu bar. If you haven't kept track of this, Tim, do you want to tell us more about what this menu All bar right. looks like? Basically, instead of having a menu bar, yeah, just to explain to people what, what the menu bar is at the top, you know, you got file, uh, edit, etc., etc. at the top. Those, those buttons, we can click and get the different menus. Getting rid of all that, now it's just a purely a search. Yes. Which, which is exactly what they did with the apps and which I whinged about when they did it with the apps because it nails discoverability. I don't mind this. And um, if you remember um, Carl Sandrock, yes. who, who has been on our show before, he is a huge fan of this type of interface because it's sort of like having a command line in your GUI. It's much faster than trying to navigate a menu if you know what you're doing. As long as they make it work with dual screens with Unity does not <laughs> work. And it is painfully slow to get. As in, it, okay, just... So it's exactly what, you, uh, what I've got in Windows 7, except in Windows 7. Yeah, no, exactly. no, no, but you did not your menu bar. No, no, they did it correctly in Windows 7, which is you still have well, – okay, I'm thinking how they did for yeah. – You're talking about launching programs. Launching programs, yes. right. You still have a menu, but at the bottom you can sit and type, yes. and it will then find the application you want. So you, you have the base of both worlds. Now, my yeah. problem with Unity is – Which they stole from Mac, by the way. Anyway, I'm just going to put that true. out there. And apparently Mac also has this. Uh, this Sorry, it's called Spotlight. Oh, uh, Spotlight. For okay. searching for okay, anything. Now, they want to now do this for – the for the menu bar menu bar yeah right on unity and once again instead of going well let's add a search thing and still have the menu bar because quite often there's certain options you don't even know are there you want to go they say well let's just now. replace it yeah yeah and it's like and so and so what Carl Sandrock's opinion is here sorry Carl if I misrepresented we had such a brief conversation and and I understand what he's saying is if the natural language parsing is good enough. You might not need that kind of discoverability. You can go, um, you know, m maybe if you're looking for something, you go filters, and it'll bring up a list of filters. Uh, or if you, if you want to go, again, I want to remove red eye. If you know exactly what that app can do, and you, you fully affair with all the features and what it can do. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times when you're opening a new app, and I do this all the time, let's say you've never used mail before, Right. Do you know you need a button that says send mail? Okay, mail's a bad example. <laughs> Image edits is perfect. Yes. I want to get a box. I don't know that there are boxes. So what do I search for? Shapes? Mm. But I don't know these shapes. So at the point when I'm coming and I'm learning a new app, this works great if I know exactly what I want to do and where I want to go. Uh, and I was saying have the best of both worlds. Have it so that I can look through what, what the options are, but then give me a search bar. Yes. What, why remove... My, my edit buttons. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, I, I think we all agree that uh, it's going to ruin discoverability. They really need to think through that properly. And my stand in response, <sighs> I still got a Windows 7 as image if anybody wants No, to. no. 
Replace it with XFC. Very easy. <laughs> done it. Works beautifully. Way more snappy than any I other. I love XFC. Yes. I, I used that in my Varsity days quite extensively cool. because I didn't like Gnome back. Or well, back I don't like Unity. I know. <laughs> Still using Ubuntu to all the rest of it. Um, and that, this was the other thing about it. They're doing this in the long term. Really yes. All right, so the next thing um, that happened this, this week is the DOC called the press conference. We have a new Minister of Communications. Let me hear her again. Um, and uh, so she called the press conference to sort of, you know, uh, give a status update on where the DOC is on things. And I got to interview her, the first cool. Minister of Communications that actually kept an interview appointment. It was fantastic. Very cool. Um, and uh, one of the interesting things to come out of this was that is the digital TV debate on encryption settled? Um, for, those <laughs> yeah. who, for those who missed this, um, what was proposed um, is the free-to-air broadcasters like ETV and SABC apparently went out on tender for a set-top box control mechanism. Mm -hmm. yeah. So digital TV won't work on your standard TV set, right? So... Um, you're going to need some sort of intermediary translation device, a lot like a decoder called the set-top box, to get your to convert your digital signal into something your TV can display. Rad. Um, now, the problem is the government is going to subsidize some of these. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure, A, those things don't get exported. They want to make sure, B, that the minimum specs that, um, that we have in the South African set-top box specification that's going to get a SAN spec, that that's adhered to. All those kinds of things, all those kinds of factors come up uh, for what they call a set-top box control scheme. Now, Apparently, what came back in these tenders are a bunch of people who encrypt signals, a lot like decoders, right? So those are the people who tended on this who bid on this tender, and so um, this is what you know came. This is what was proposed in by the free-to-air broadcasters, and Mnet of all people went, "Hang on a minute, this is a bad idea." <laughs> <laughs> we should not be encrypting our free-to-air broadcasts. Um, a lot of people agreed with them. A lot of people disagreed with them. ETV and Mnet squared off. They, um, we've got a, a nice article um, up on, on the various points if you're interested in, in looking at what's going on there. The bottom line is the DOC has now come out and said they believe that encryption is against the Broadcasting Act. Klar, Schluss, cool. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Something consumers favor. Well done. Yeah, yeah. And ETV might still challenge us. We'll see. But this is what the DOC the said. Big cool. The big it's very simple to explain. The big problem is, who's going to run that call center? <laughs> That's who's what Mnet said. Run that call That's center. That's what Mnet said. So you've got your little bunny ears onto your little decoder, plugged into your TV, and your signal is encrypted. Who do I call? That is a problem. Yes. Uh, having said, there was a bit more to the whole ETV DSTV argument. I'm going to just very quickly. Um, also, I know ETV wanted more complicated decoders to offer more services. We, we and it's not just ETV. The government actually requested a set-top box, a minimum set-top box spec that would result in a 700 rand set-top box. Now keep in mind that that we actually have to subsidise some set-top boxes for the lowest income bracket of people because they won't be able to afford a set-top box, let alone a 700 rand set-top box. And uh, yeah, so it's a, it's yeah, it was a very cool. anyway. I'm going to move us sorry into our, our, our kicker. Um, it is just awesome. aren't we going to talk it about uh, broadband data expiring? <laughs> Next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're out of time. We can, we can talk about it in Quick Geek as well. Yeah. So you can catch yeah. us in Quick Geek. Cool. Um, we'll probably cover that and then we'll talk about it and in the And we depth might even try to do that show. live tonight. Cool. Go for it. Go. Cool. Kicker. Anyway, Kicker. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> Star Wars Uncut Project is finally complete. It's on YouTube. Basically, what it is, um, people could bid to do 15 mid, mid segments of Star Wars 4. Oh, which so it's is, not Greedo it's Shitty Shitty I'm concerned it's episode 1. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Um, and basically, it's it's you just have to bid, and then however you wanted to, you you got to sign fifteen seconds, and you did it. Oh, uh, so you could make Han shoot first? Yes. Yes. You can edit. You can do whatever. Uh, you can basically just some background. Guys, this project started in two thousand and nine, so everybody could make a fifteen sec seconds clip of the movie. Yes. And then this editor. <laughs> Guy, you had lots of time on hand. Um, they actually mentioned the guy. Went and took all these contributions and put together the ultimate Star Wars episode. Four. Uh, and you get, you've, in some people, you've got people dressing up. Some people, the guys even dress up. They just did their lions. Other ones, they did drawings. Some did animated ones. Some did where they took the original video and like altered it slightly. It sounds awesome. And I know exactly what I'm doing for two hours when I get home. Um, <laughs> and look, just. Watching the bit, and look, I'm excited. I just watched it, like zoomed a bit and zoomed a bit, just to see the different things people did. It is awesome. It's just so editing awesome. A two-hour video in 15-minute segments. 
Yes. I would second. have contributed oh, 50 source, seconds. source content from I don't know how many sources. I mean, like. I would cry. And this guy is amazing. Yeah. Um, even if you don't like Star Wars, just go look at it, see what some of these guys did. And, you know, some people are on full outfits, but then other people aren't. And, or, or like versions of the outfits. And uh, I remember one, there was a one where they, they climb onto these like animals in the desert. And there you can see these parents with the kids and the parents are the, the big woolly beasts with like towels on them and the kids jump on them and they go off. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it is very trippy. It is so worth it. And that's, if you, if you missed it, uh, Star Wars episode one, um, 3D is being launched. So you can now go and watch Jar Jar Binks in 3D. Skip. There, there was no Star Wars Episode 1. It, you know, they only made the three. They always said they were going to make three more, and they never did. So okay. sad. It's, it's bad. It's, it's, it's like, you know, Matrix, they ended it in Episode 1. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the, the Matrix was great. They should have made sequels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, we're going to end. I just want to say thank you to Jan. Where can they find you? At mybroadband.co.za forward slash author forward slash Jan Dash from Yellen. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just type my broadband at and, and I write a lot cool. of articles there. I'm the staff writer. Rag on me there. We do. I'm also on Twitter at YanVZA. Awesome. Cool. We're going to find you, Tim. They can find me on Twitter at Tim underscore Hog. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I did have a blog, but I must say, I don't think I've updated for about a year and a half. It's I terrible. Just, I have about 20 cute posts that I need to just flesh out and I've never... <laughs> yeah, anyway. I'm too busy doing this stuff or <laughs> editing things in the back end for this stuff or streaming or whatever. Yes. So, Johan, where can they find you? Well, I started writing on my blog again. So you can find me at blog.who-else.co.za. Awesome. I'll subscribe to your newsletter. And what newsletter? <laughs> RSS feed. You, you, <laughs> you, you can yeah. find the mixer or well, you can't. That's no, the can't. point. If you can, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> you, know. If, if you can, then you didn't. It's like that whole thing, you know, and it's... Uh, Chuckers, guys, you know, if they, there's a theory, if anybody can work out the meaning of how the universe works and the rest of it, it suddenly re evolves and gets more complicated. So then you don't know yeah, the meaning anymore. That's confusing me. And, and the, the theory is this that sounds like times something really. from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the it Galaxy. Is. Excellent. Awesome. <laughs> well, With that, thank you very much. Catch the rest of our show. Yes. Let's talk music. Friday. Yes. Let's talk Afrikaans. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's talk sport. Next Boys week, yesterday. Tuesday. Okay. And let's talk possibility. Next week, Monday. Did I miss anybody? No, it's five shows no, now a week. I, th I think it's eight. Yeah, like really. You and don't watch out. We'll, do, we'll start doing events Just again. cancel your TV license and come watch us.